Today on the Techno Gardener, we are going to show you how to set up and operate VeggieCloud.com. In this tutorial, we will show you how to visually see your sensor's data through signing up as a new user, setting up a location, configuring a hub, setting up your sensors, and creating a view. In addition, we will show how to create custom triggers that respond to sensor events by creating a recipient and configuring an action. To begin, you will need to create an account as a new user. After opening a browser, go to VeggieCloud.com and click Sign Up on the top right corner. Fill out your basic login information and keep the box checked if you want to receive updates on cool new products and services. Next. Set up a location that your device will reside. After clicking to add a new location, be sure to give an accurate name describing where the sensor group will be. The rest of the information is optional, should you need it. After setting up a location, you are ready to add a hub to VeggieCloud. Veggie hubs act as a power source for your sensors, and they are what log your data to the cloud. First, type in a descriptive name, select the model of your Veggie hub, and then add a location. The rest of the info will be filled in for you. Finally, you'll need to configure your sensors. After adding a hub, you will notice that VeggieCloud automatically adds sensors for each slot in your hub. In addition, a battery sensor is automatically added to quickly view how much power your hub has left. To fine-tune your sensors, click the edit icon next to the name. Optionally, change the sensor name and select a location. The correct hub is already inputted for you, so we suggest you leave that alone. Next, select a sensor type based on the sensor connected to the hub. The input channel refers to which hub slot the sensor is connected to, going from left to right. Again, this will be filled in for you. Data transformation allows you to easily convert a sensor's voltage reading into a more readable format. We have provided a few default values for you but you can also create your own data transformations to fine-tune your sensors. Determine the unit type that you want displayed, and then add any notes that you think would be helpful. Having set up our first sensor, we can now appreciate the convenience and informative power of VeggieCloud through creating a view. To set up a view, simply select a pre-configured sensor, choose how you want your data displayed, and name the graph. Optionally, you can name your axes as well. For the purposes of this video, I have created several more views to demonstrate VeggieCloud. Selecting a view will pull up its aggregate data. You can filter your view by date, and you can compare one view with another. After setting up several views on VeggieCloud, I began to realize just how helpful data logging can be. For example, I have some chickens in my backyard. It's important to make sure that they have water, but this quickly can become a chore as I feel like I'm constantly checking their tank every single day. So, I added Vegetronics Aquaplum to their water tank and hooked it up to Veggie Cloud. Now I can quickly see when the coop is running low on water and I only go out when I need to. From looking at my view, I realize that my cold frame is getting too hot on the inside, which is killing my plants. So, I've created a trigger to alert me when I need to cool it down. To start, we need to first add a recipient. Recipients contain the information VeggieCloud needs to notify you for a given action. For this example, I will set up my phone number to receive an alert. VeggieCloud will send a verification code to the requested number or email, and you will need to input this number to complete the process. After verifying, I am ready to set up an action. From your dashboard, select Actions, and then click Create New Action. Give your action a descriptive name, and then select the recipient you just configured. Finally, type in the message you'd want to receive every time the action is triggered. For my case, I want to know every time my greenhouse is warmer than 110 degrees. Next, we need to select the sensor that will trigger the alert, and determine the range that will trigger it. In order, you can have no triggering threshold, trigger when the sensor's value is less than the threshold, greater than the threshold, or have a combination of thresholds using inside and outside ranges. Additionally, if you only want to be notified during a certain time window, you can select time-dependent 
and specify when you want to trigger the action. Having created the action, I now know every time my mini greenhouse gets too hot, and I can save my plants before they die. Thanks for watching. To learn how to automate your garden with Alexa and to view more cool products, visit vegetronics.com.